Hi, radio fans. Welcome to Behind the Mic from otrpodcast.com. I'm your host, Austin Bach, and on this podcast, we explore the history behind many of old-time radio's greatest performances. We jump around from series to series, picking one episode each week, and together we learn about the actors, producers, sponsors, and more before listening to that full episode as it was originally broadcast. If you have feedback for today's show or have a great idea for a future podcast, please send me an email at contact at otrpodcast.com. You can also send me a voice message by clicking the link in the show notes, or if you're watching this on YouTube, just leave a comment down below. Today's episode will begin after a brief message from our sponsor. Casey Crime Photographer, known by a variety of titles on radio including Crime Photographer, Flash Gun Casey, and Casey Press Photographer, was a media franchise from the 1930s to the 1960s. The character was a creation of novelist George Harmon Cox and was featured in the pulp magazine Black Mask, as well as the novels, comic books, radio, film, television, and theater. The central character Jack Flash Gun Casey was a crime photographer for the newspaper The Morning Express and with the help of reporter Ann Williams, solved crimes. He would later recount his stories to Ethelbert the bartender and other friends at the Blue Note Tavern and Jazz Club. Sponsors of the show included Anchor Hawking, Tony Home Permanence, Tony Shampoo, and Philip Morris. Today's episode was originally broadcast on August 29, 1946. Please enjoy The Red Raincoat from Casey Crime Photographer. Well, Casey, how are you coming along with that crossword puzzle? I'm stuck, Ethelbert, for a seven-letter name beginning with H, and it's a place in Ohio. That's a tough one, Casey. Ah, not for me, boys, not for me. Hi, Tony. Hi, fellas. Yes, sir, the word you're looking for is Hawking. H-O-C-K-I-N-G. The Hawking Valley. Hey, that fits. Hey, I get it. Anchor Hawking. Oh, you said it, Casey. Anchor Hawking. The world's largest makers of household glass. Prime Photographer. Brought to you by Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers. Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole... Our adventure for tonight, The Red Raincoat. Night, about 9.30. Rain, hard, pelting rain that has driven people indoors and left the streets deserted. At the corner, a bus stop. A woman alights from it. She wears a red hooded raincoat that covers her head and most of her face. She turns into a side street lined with cheap walk-up apartment houses. Midway of the block, she's about to pass the entrance to an alley when, from its darkness, there's a gunshot. Then another, and another. A woman falls. On the street, brakes are hastily applied to a bruising taxi. As it comes to a skidding halt, the driver... Police! 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 Hey, copper! I heard those shots. Where? From that alley, I think. I didn't see no one. Well, this dame got it in the back. Three bullet holes. Stay here, fella. Don't let anybody touch her. I'm going to look in that alley. Get back, you people. Get back. This ain't a free show. There's been a murder here. Push him back, Valetti. So I'll have room to chew the picture. I'm doing the best I can, Casey. Move, you folks. Move. That's better. There's one for page one. Well, that'll be all, Casey. Well, look who's finally got here, my old pal Logan. How often do I have to tell you that no press pictures are to be taken at the scene of a homicide until after the police photographers get through? I've got a rotten memory, haven't I, Chum? By rights, I ought to take that camera away from you. Oh, no, you wouldn't do that to me, not with all these people looking on. What? Oh, not. You cops, push this mob back. Clear the block so we'll have room to move around. Sergeant. Yes, Captain. 
Tell me what happened to you. I can tell you that, Logan. Huh? A cab driver, that little guy over there, heard three shots fired from the alley here and saw this gal in the red raincoat fold up on the sidewalk. Huh? A uniformed cop, this guy right here, heard the shots too, searched the alley and found nothing. Well, all the rest is up to you. What is Doc's report, Joe, Sergeant? He said the woman was killed instantly, Captain. One of those bullet holes is in line with the heart. Of course, you can't be sure it followed that line through her body until she's turned over. Well, don't do that when my tech men get through. No, sir. Anyone find out who the woman is? Not yet, sir. When we can go through her pockets, we'll probably find something that'll... Ann Williams is circulating through that crowd, Logan, trying to locate someone who might know... Say, here she comes now with a fat tape. Hello, Captain. Hello, Miss Williams. Uh, Casey, this lady thinks she recognizes the dead woman. Well, that's swell, Annie. If you can identify her, lady, your picture will be in the paper. Say, I happen to be in charge here. Oh, excuse us, Logan. Uh, who do you think the dead woman is, lady? Well, as I was just telling this young newspaper woman officer, I can't be sure because the poor thing is lying on her face. But I'm almost positive that's the body of Nora Gellhorn, because she had a red raincoat exactly like that. <laughs> She's the only woman in this neighborhood who'd wear anything so flashy. And I've got a notion that a certain person wanted her out of the way. Huh? What do you mean by that? Well, her husband, officer, has been carrying on something disgraceful with another woman. Mrs. Gellhorn told me that herself. And she wasn't the sort who'd let a man divorce her just because he happened to fall in love with somebody else. So I think... That her husband shot her? Oh, I know it's an awful thing to say, mister, but from the goings-on I've heard about it, I think he's been planning to put her out of the way for a long time. As I was saying to my eldest daughter, Eloise, only last uh, night... Where do these Gellhorns live? Oh, uh, over there in the corner building on this side of the street. That's number 371, apartment 4C. I live in the apartment house next door. I'm Mrs. Patch. Mrs. Ida Patch. I said to my eldest daughter only last uh, night... Excuse I said... me, Mrs. Patch. Who's the other woman in this case? The one you say Gellhorn's been carrying on with? Oh, her name's Randall, Emma Randall. She and her husband live in the same building as the Gellhorns. Their apartment's directly across from mine. Hey, wait a minute. This Emma Randall has a husband? Yeah, poor man. Hey, you know, he stands in the way of Ferris Gellhorn's plans, too, so if you policemen don't act fast and put that murderer behind bars, we'll you'll... will act gonna... fast, Mrs. Patch, if a checkup shows that your story is oh, okay. Oh, you'll find it, too, all right. I'm not the only person in this block who's been expecting a thing like this to happen. Captain Logan. Yes, Sergeant? The photographers and tech men are finished. You can examine the body now. Come on, Mrs. Patch. I want you to make your identification positive. Oh, I hate to look at the poor thing. Oh, well, Captain, I know my duty. Well, will you turn the body over, Doctor, so we can see the face? Uh, thanks. Mm, she wasn't a bad-looking gal, Annie. Nope. Kind of pretty. Oh! Oh! Well, what's the matter, Mrs. Patch? Wait! That isn't Nora Gellhorn. It isn't? No, that's Emma Randall. The woman you said Gellhorn was in love with? Yeah, but that's Nora Gellhorn's raincoat. I'm sure of it now that I see it close. Uh, since Mrs. Gellhorn isn't inside of it, you'll have to revise your theory. I guess you don't think Gellhorn would shoot the woman he's in love with. No, no, he was crazy about Mrs. Randall. He wouldn't shoot her. Uh, too bad, Logan. For a few minutes, it looked as though you had a sweet suspect in a case that was half sewed up. Well, it may still be that way. Mrs. Patch, what kind of a guy is Randall, this dead woman's husband? Well, he's a nice, quiet kind uh, of guy. Quiet man. kind, yeah. huh? Did he know about his wife from Gellhorn? Oh, he must have. Everybody knew. Uh, he sounds like the answer, Casey. This guy, Randall, stood all he could, then waited for his wife tonight and paid her off. James Randall wouldn't do that. He couldn't have done it. I'm afraid that's something you can't be sure of, lady. But I am sure. Mr. Randall hasn't been outside of his apartment since early this evening. He was inside it when I heard shooting down here on the street. How do you know he was inside? Well, his living room window was just across the court from mine. One of his shades was up a few inches, and I saw him over there, lying on the couch. You saw him? Well, just by accident, of course. Now, I never spy on my neighbors. Uh, well, that's that, Logan. Yeah. But there's another possible angle. What? That red raincoat. Mistaken identity. Kelhorn may have thought he was shooting his wife. That's it, Annie. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute. Mrs. Patch, you're sure this is Mrs. Gellhorn's raincoat? Oh, I'm positive. I recognize it by those peculiar buttons on that little mended place on the right shoulder. Well, have you any idea why Mrs. Randall should have been wearing it? Well, I suppose Nora Gellhorn lent it to her. Weren't they enemies? Well, not outwardly. Like most jealous women, they made believe they were friends. Would have made things kind of difficult if they didn't, seeing as they not only lived in the same house, but worked in the same restaurant. Uh, worked in the same yeah, restaurant? Yeah, Harley's Grill. They're both waitresses there. Do well, you know if Mrs. Gellhorn or her husband are home now? No, I don't. Their windows aren't on my side of the house. 
That's too bad. Well, let's find out for ourselves, Logan. We will, Casey. Sergeant, take charge here. Yes, sir. Have Martin take Mrs. Patch down to headquarters and get a complete deposition from her. Oh, I'd much rather go with you, Captain. Uh, you and the Captain can get together later, Mrs. Patch. But I'll shoot that picture of you now. For the paper, Mr. Casey? Ah, uh, the best paper in town. Oh, goodness, I look just a fright in this old coat. On account of rain, I didn't well, get... fine to... clothes on you would only gild the lily. Oh, Mr. Casey. Uh, well, now, just stand just as you are. Hold that bewitching smile. <laughs> that does it. You want to take another? If he does, he's staying here without me. Come on, Miss Williams. I'll okay. take more shots of you later, Mrs. Patch. Coming, Logan. With prices mounting everywhere, here's a fact that's worth noting. Right now, on the shelves and counters of your favorite chain, Variety Hardware and Department Stores, you will find a wide variety of pale blue Fire King oven glass dishes at prices far lower than you would have paid for any baking dish a few years ago. And each piece of Fire King oven glass, regardless of price, is guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Now is a good time to replace your worn-out kitchen utensils with new and beautiful, easy-to-clean and easy-to-keep-clean Fire King oven glass. Remember that Fire King oven glass is not only a sturdy, dependable friend in the kitchen, it is also an adornment to your table. Fire King Oven Glass is a product of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. Try to pull yourself together, Mr. Randall. I'm sorry we've had to bring you such rotten news. And my wife. Dead. Tough fellow. Please let me go to her. I got a shirt. Uh, not now. Later, pal. Yeah, but she's lying down there in the street, you say, in the rain. They'll have taken her away by now, Mr. Randall. You can go to her when you get a little more used to the idea of what you'll have to see. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that'll be better. Who killed her, Captain? Who shot my wife? Well, we hope you may be able to help us find that out. I don't know. I, I can't help you. <clears throat> Before we came to you, we stopped at the Gellhorn's apartment. Nobody was home. Why'd you stop there? Well, we want to meet uh, Mr. Gellhorn, especially. Is he a friend of yours? He's a neighbor. I see. You, uh... You've been talking to people, Captain. Someone's been telling you things. Oh, well, frankly, yes. Randall, do you think... No. That... Ferris Gellhorn would be the last man in the world who'd kill my wife. That wasn't the question I meant to ask you. You think he's the sort who'd kill his own wife? I... I don't know. Now, when you let us in here, Mr. Randall, you said you'd been asleep. Yeah, I, I was tired and I came home from work and I lay down on the couch there. Well, what time was that? It was around half past six, Mr. Casey. I slept until your knock at the door woke me up. Uh, there was plenty of daylight when you fell asleep, around half past six, Mr. Randall. Why did you turn the electric lights on then? The lights? Yeah. We saw a crack of light under the door before we knocked and woke you up. Well, you see, when my wife is... Was working late, Mr. Casey. I always turned the light on for her if I was going out or going to sleep. You see, she... She headed to come home to a darker partner. Now, will you keep your big mouth shut, Casey, and let me handle this? It was a question we wanted answered, wasn't it? Well, I'd have asked the question, and I'll check on the answer. Now, you attend to your job and let me attend to mine. Okay, I'll take some pictures. Uh, no? Well, Morning Express readers will want to know what the dead woman's apartment looks like. That'll be a good shot of this living room. Now I'll get one of the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Randall, you must try to pull yourself together. You, you, you just must. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll do my best, Miss Williams. Good. Well, <clears throat> how, uh, how long had you been married, Randall? Eight years. Uh, when did you and your wife meet the Gellhorns? Well, about two years ago, Captain. What sort of a fellow is Gellhorn? I hate the guys inside. He's a lousy wolf and a double crosser. But if you suspect him of her murder, I know you're wrong. He wanted her to live. He didn't want her dead. This man sounds like a square shooter, Captain. Yeah, he does, Miss Williams. Check me down on that, too. Oh, so you're back again, Casey. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to miss anything. Who's there? Pauletti, Captain. Uh, come in. We found Mrs. Gellhorn. Oh, is this... I'm Nora Gellhorn, Captain. This officer came to the restaurant for me. He, he told me why. Uh, sit down, Mrs. Gellhorn. I've got to ask you some questions. Just a minute, please. Jim. Yeah, Nora. You know I didn't like your wife. I had plenty of reason not to, but 
Now, I'm very sorry for you. Thank you. Now, Captain, what did you want to know? Well, first, Mrs. Gellhorn, did you lend Mrs. Randall the raincoat she wore tonight? Yes, I did. It was pouring when she got through work, and she didn't even have an umbrella with her. I was working late tonight in another girl's place, and I figured the rain had stopped by the time I finished, so I said, take my coat. And you remained at the restaurant after Mrs. Randall left there, Mrs. Gellhorn? Yes, I did. I checked, and Mrs. Gellhorn was in the restaurant when Mrs. Randall was shot, Captain. Okay, Pauletti. Mrs. Gellhorn. Yes? You said you worked late tonight in another girl's place? That's right. And do you usually come home at the same time as Mrs. Randall? Usually. Did your husband expect you at the usual time tonight? I guess so. I didn't bother to tell him. He doesn't care when I come home or if I come home. That looks like the payoff, Casey. Yeah. Uh, you know where your husband is tonight, Mrs. Gellhorn? Well, he told me he was going to the movies. What theater? I don't know. He might find him at any of the neighborhood theaters. Except the 4th Avenue. He went there last night to see Lost Holiday. We'll pick him up. Sergeant Flanagan's posted guys at all the theaters around here, Captain. And that Mrs. Patch gave us a first-class description of Gellhorn. So Mrs. Patch is the one who's been telling you cops things. She told us nothing that you and Mr. Randall haven't verified, Mrs. Gellhorn. Oh, all right, then. My husband has been two-timing both me and Jim Randall here. But if you've got an idea that he killed Emma, you're wrong. I've told him that, Nora. Well, Mrs. Gellhorn... You think he'd have liked you out of the way and uh, Randall here, so he and Mrs. Randall would be free to get married? Well, well, sure he'd have liked that, but I know that he wouldn't... Come in. We've got Gellhorn, sir. I'm all ready for him, Sergeant. He's downstairs. You want him brought up here? Yeah, uh, wait a minute. He hasn't been told anything. Oh, not a word, sir. Where'd you get him? Coming out of the 4th Avenue Theater. 4th Avenue? You said he'd seen the show there, Mrs. Gellhorn. Well, I thought he had... Last night. I can't understand. I can. Uh, go into that bedroom, Mrs. Gellhorn. Into the bedroom? Uh, for just a few minutes. Close the door and don't come out till I call you. Then come out quick. All right, I'll do it, but I, I don't... Okay, Sergeant. Have Gellhorn brought up. Yes, sir. The captain will see him up here, Pete. Come on. The old surprise treatment for Gellhorn, Logan. Eh? Yeah. His reaction when he sees his wife alive is all I need now. Certainly looks as though... Everything that... fits. Even the theater where they picked him up. He'd seen the picture there so he could describe every part of it that was shown while he was waiting in that alley. He went there after the shooting to establish an alibi. Sure, Mr. Sure Reed. he is, Captain. Bring him in. You don't have to job. I'm Captain Logan, Gellhorn. So you're the boss of these monkeys who've been putting the muscle on me. What's the big idea? We're simply doing a little investigating, Mr. Gellhorn. Investigating what? And why here? Randall, what's your part in this? Why have I been brought to his apartment? I'll explain, Gellhorn, if you need an explanation after... A lady, come out of that bedroom. You in that bedroom, come out. Nora. Think you're looking at a ghost, Gellhorn? What? What's my wife doing here? She's the last person you expected to see, isn't she? You thought she was dead. Well, I... Yes, so wipe that phony look of innocence off your face. The woman who wore your wife's red raincoat tonight was Emma Randall. Huh? She's dead. Emma's dead? Yes, Gellhorn. With three bullets in her back that you put there. I? I get it now, Captain. He mistook her for me in my raincoat. He killed my wife. Let me at him. I'll tell him. Take him, boys. I've got him, Captain. Got him before I get a picture. What's this all about? You know, Gellhorn. I'm arresting you on a charge of murder. Me? Murder? Got a shot of that, too. All right, boys. Let's get him back to headquarters. Well, you can't do this. You don't know what you're doing. Well, come on, Casey. This case is all sewed up. Let's get our stuff to the paper. Okay, honey. Uh, but I wonder... What? If this case is sewed up right. <laughs> After what you and Miss Williams have told me, Casey, I can't see any doubt of that fellow Gellhorn's guiltiness. There isn't any doubt, Ethelbert, except in Casey's much too active imagination. Oh, Annie, you closed your mind like Logan. Oh. You two had so completely sold yourselves on Gellhorn's guilt before you saw him that nothing could unsell you. It didn't mean a thing to you, for instance, when Logan's big surprise act laid an egg. Oh, that. 
Gellhorn didn't act as if he was looking at a ghost when his wife stepped out of that bedroom. Well, so what? He probably got a flash of Emma Randall's face after he shot her, realized the big mistake he made, and was all prepared. Well, that's possible, yeah. You know, Mrs. Gellhorn took longer than she should have to come out of that bedroom. And then she looked more nervous than her husband. I'd like to know why. Oh, Casey, you're trying to make something out of such little things. The parts of the case fit too smoothly, Annie, as though they'd been oiled by somebody. Oh, but I can't figure it out. Oh, nuts. You know, this Gellhorn business is a lot like another murder I read about. It happened over in England. And that's the Haslington murder, yeah. Haslington was the name of the gal who got shot. You know about it, huh? Yeah, Ethelbert. Oh, that's a famous old-timer, Ethelbert. Happened before any one of us were born. It was all news to me when I read it a couple of months ago in a detective magazine. They called it The Case of the Sable Cloak. Case of the Sable... <laughs> yeah, detective magazine would. Hmm? Say, you know, I promised to show you those pictures I took last night that the paper didn't have space for. Yeah, I'd like to see them. Uh, here. Here's a print of the Randall living room. This is the bedroom... And here's Mrs. Patch. Mm, and will she be sore because her picture didn't make the paper? Uh, she's the woman who gave us the lead on Gelhorn. Ain't she a funny-looking old dame? Look at the... <laughs> <laughs> yes. She's a dangerous old dame, I tell you. Say, wait a minute. Give me that picture I took of the bedroom. What? I noticed it before, but it didn't register. Look at the pillows on the bed. Well, well, they're, they're, they're just pillows. Yeah, but they're on top of the bedspread, uncovered. I don't see... Randall's think... alibi, Annie. What? And, now, wait a minute. Look at this picture of the living room. The window shades are pulled to within a few inches at the bottom. Now, that narrow space is all Mrs. Patch had to look through when she saw Randall lying on the couch. What have pillows in the bedroom got to do with... That's what I'd like to know. Ethelbert, you say you read about the Haslington murder in a recent magazine. Was the magazine True Murder Chronicles? Yeah, but it was called The Case of the Sable Cloak. What does it? You've been a great help to me tonight, pal. And to Ferris Gellhorn. I? Come on, Annie. We're going to pay another call on Emma Randall's husband. Well, okay, Casey, but I'd still like to know... So would I. But what was the... Oh, they always do that to me. Who's that? Casey, Mr. Randall, and Miss Williams. May we come in? It's important. Uh, just a minute. Casey, how are you going You'll to... You'll soon know, Annie. Hmm. A door just closed inside there. So what? I don't know why you haven't told me all you I've think. I've been too busy thinking to tell you anything. Okay. Uh, come in. Thanks, Randall. Uh, sit down, Miss Williams. Thank you. Casey. I'll rest on my feet, thanks. What, uh... What have you come to see me about? New evidence in your wife's murder. New evidence? Yeah. Gellhorn didn't kill her. What do you mean? Say, it's, it's awful stuffy in here. You mind if I lift this shade and raise the window a little? Since you're already doing Thanks. it. Thanks. Randall, you ever read a story called The Case of the Sable Cloak? I... No. <laughs> it's funny. It was published only a few months ago... In True Murder Chronicles. And I noticed several issues of that magazine here last evening. Well, I, uh... Those magazines belong to my wife. I... I never read them. Oh, I see. Well, this particular story told about a rich Englishman who fell hard for a gal named Haslington. He wanted to marry her, but he had a wife. His wife owned a sable coat. And one night he shot and killed a woman who was wearing that coat. But the woman had borrowed it from his wife. And the woman was Miss Haslington. Well, that, uh... That's, uh... Like Gellhorn and, uh... And Emma. Uh-huh, yeah. The cops were pretty sure to remember the famous Haslington case if a similar murder occurred and to jump to a conclusion based upon it, see? If everything was previously arranged to point that way. Uh, don't you think so? I, uh... I don't know. Oh, sure you do. I tell you, now, I the don't... guy who really murdered your wife was fairly smart. He started to point suspicion toward where he wanted to fall soon after that magazine story gave him his big idea. And he figured a pretty fair alibi. He even had an excuse for a light to burn when it shouldn't have, so he could be seen in a place where he wasn't. What are you driving at? After the murder, he continued to play smart. 
He denied his belief in Gellhorn's guilt while constantly pointing the finger at him. And he got rid of the clothes he'd worn out in the rain. I, I looked for him while I was in your bedroom last no, you, night. You're accusing me? Because you slipped up on a little detail last night and because tonight the two of you made a bigger mistake. Keep away from that door. Come out of that room, Mrs. Gellhorn. Come out. All right. Here I am. You shouldn't have let your murder partner come here to talk things over, Randall. And you shouldn't have hidden her so clumsily before you let us in. He knows, Nora. He knows everything. Shut up, Jim. He wouldn't have known anything if you hadn't said that. It doesn't matter now, does it? Yes, it does. Don't make a move. Ooh. Means you too, Miss Williams. Is that the gun your boyfriend used to kill his wife with? If it is, you'll never prove it. Nora, what are you going to do? The only thing to do, Jim, kill these people. They know you killed your wife and that I helped you. They can send us to the chair. You'll never get away with it. We'll tell the police you broke in here and I shot you in self-defense. Just a second, Mrs. Gellhorn. I want to go on living. And I've arranged things, so I will. How do you mean? <laughs> You've forgotten. I opened that window. Window? Mrs. Patch. She's been getting an eyeful and an earful. I'll have you know, Mr. Casey, that I only happen to be at this window by accident. I believe you, Mrs. Patch. Give me that oh, gun, Mrs. Oh. Gellhorn. Oh. Thank you. Now, you two smart killers, sit down and wait for the cops. Go on, Randall. Phone headquarters, Annie. Okay, Casey. After I phone city desk. Oh, but wait a minute. You still haven't told me why those pillows on the top of the bed made We'll go over to the blue note, Annie, and I'll tell you all about it. All right. Oh, Mrs. Patch. Yes? Yeah? I guarantee that your picture will be in the Express tomorrow. Oh, Mr. Casey! <laughs> Supplies still present a picture of confusion. Many of the old established brand names are scarce. Many new names appear on your grocer's shelves. Under the circumstances, how can you be sure of getting the quality you want? May I make this suggestion? First, look for a name you know. And second, and especially when in doubt, buy glass packed foods. For the glass container in itself is a guarantee of quality. Being transparent, only the best can be packed in glass. Only the best is packed in glass. Anchor glass containers and tamper-proof anchor caps, so widely used for the packaging of better foods, are products of Anchor Hawking. <laughs> A great name in glass. Now, back to Casey and Anne at the Blue Note Cafe. This uh, Randall and Mrs. Gellhorn planned the killing so they could be free to tie up with one another, huh, Casey? That's right, Ethelbert, yeah. You still haven't told me what you had on Randall when you went to his place, Casey. Well, I didn't have anything, except the Haslington case you'd mentioned. You mean the case of the sable cloak? <laughs> okay, pal, the case of the sable cloak. I think that's a nice title. I only had that, a hunch about those bed pillars... And I hope that Randall would crack up and make an admission. Yeah, what was your hunch about them bed pillows? Well, I figured Randall might have rigged up a dummy to fool Mrs. Patch. Uh -huh. That all she really saw were his pants and shirt stuffed with pillows. And that was all she saw, too, Ethelbert. When Randall came back after the shooting, he got out of his wet clothes, put on the dry ones that had covered the dummy, and tossed the pillows back under the bed. But a little too carelessly. What did he do with the clothes he'd worn out in the rain? Put them in Gellhorn's apartment. They belonged to Gellhorn. Randall had even worn his things. Say, he and that Mrs. Gellhorn thought of almost everything. Yes, Ethelbert. Almost everything. You know, Casey, it's like my sister Edna says. Quote, anything that's not worth doing is not worth doing well. Yeah, unquote. <laughs> Time Photographer is directed by John Dietz and stars Stotts Cotsworth as Casey. It is written by Alonzo Dean Cole and is based on the fictional character of Casey created by George Harmon Cox. It's lighter, more compact. It requires no deposit, no return to the store. We're talking about that famous Anchor Glass beer and ale bottle pioneered by Anchor Hawking. It will shortly be released for civilian use. 
Watch for it. The new Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle, a product of Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. Our cast included Miss Leslie Woods as Ann Williams and John Gibson as Ethelbert. The Blue Note pianist was Herman Tridison, and the original music was by Archie Blyer. Crime Photographer is brought to you each Thursday at this time by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees. An- Anchor Hawking. A great name in glass. Thank you for listening to that episode. If you'd like to listen to more KC Crime Photographer, please visit OTR Podcasts. That's OTR for Old Time Radio and Podcast with an S otrpodcast.com On the website, you can register for my mailing list and as a thank you, I will send you the links to more than 14 podcasts each featuring every available episode of a popular radio program. In addition, I'll send out an email each week as I release a new episode of this podcast so that you never miss a single one. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to subscribe and give it a 5-star rating and review in your podcast app. Or, if you're watching this on YouTube, just give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for tuning in.